this place right now. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I worship you, Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. 
Oh, come on. Can we just worship him all across this place right now? Oh, I lift you up, mighty God.
they found that love this morning. Come on, can we just begin to worship that love this morning? Oh, I love you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you. Praise God. Let's go ahead and just worship Him right now. Let's continue to clap our hands and let's lift our voice. Oh, isn't He a great Savior today? Amen, 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 amen. Come on, let's just take a moment and praise Him today. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for your wonderful blessings in our life today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. In the prayer room this morning, I couldn't just help but think about what a wonderful life we have, the liberty we have, being a, a Christian, I guess you could say, and I'll use the generic term, uh, but, but being a born-again apostolic believer, let's put it that way. Uh, the wonderful life that we have. And here we are singing about it today. Hey, He came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I'm feeling abundant life in this place this morning. This isn't just something that's temporal, but it's something that can sustain you day in and day out every day of your life. Amen, amen, amen. Aren't you glad that you're in an apostolic church today full of the Holy Ghost, worshiping the one mighty God. And here He is one more time meeting us in our midst. Amen, amen, amen. Awesome, awesome job. Praise and worship leading this morning. Aren't you thankful for uh, this group of people that came early this morning and dedicated themselves and brought in the atmosphere that we had this morning? Amen, amen. It's good to be in God's house today. Amen. Our ushers are going to be helping us right now. As we are preparing to receive our offering this morning, we want to say it's so good to see everyone in God's house. Good to see our faithful saints again but especially to our guests. We have several guests here this morning, and we are glad they are here. Bethlehem Church, can we welcome our guests today and let them know we appreciate them being with us? Amen. 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 We do have a few needs we need to take before the Lord today. Jimmy Gillum is in need of prayer. Jim, Ed Holden, uh, Gene King, James Bennett, and Jimmy Stanton are in all in need of touch from the Lord today. If you have a need, you can represent that by the uplifting of your hand. Believe God to do great things all across this sanctuary today. I feel the healing virtue of God in this place. Holy Ghost is ministering. We ought to believe that He's going to do a miracle in this place this morning. Let's also remember this service as we pray. Lord, we are so grateful for Your presence that is here, for the blessing that we feel, the power of the Holy Ghost that is ministering to us. God, I pray right now that You'd move over the needs of this people, that You would bless their every need, God, every, every body that needs to be touched. Lord, every, every marriage that needs to be mended, every financial situation that needs to be touched, God, every soul that needs to be saved, we pray that you'd let it be done. In the name of Jesus, we trust you, we believe you, we put it in your hands. God, we also pray that you'd continue to move in the remainder of this service. Let your Holy Ghost continue to minister. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. We're going to ask this morning that if you're able, that you would bring your offering as the ushers lead you. Bring it today as unto the Lord. Praise this morning. 
Oh, that's right. Let's give him praise. God is worthy. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. So good to see all of you in the house of the Lord today. Certainly an honor and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord. Didn't we have a great time Friday night? Amen. That's right. We had a great time. Brother, uh, Brother Coker and his staff and all the workers, everybody that, that worked so hard, thank you so much. A lot of people, a lot of people worked very hard, and uh, we certainly appreciate it. And I uh, want you to remember want you to remember to uh, be in prayer for the Herring family, uh, Brother Danny Herring, who uh, came to church here for many years, passed away, and his, his memorial service will be here at the church today at 2 o'clock. So be in prayer for Brother Danny Herring and uh, his family. I know would appreciate it if you get the chance to come by today at 2 o'clock. Sister Barbara Lemons is in need of prayer, and uh, we're believing God to touch her thankful for that and uh, just a a lot of things going on I want you to if you will to remember to pray for my sister-in-law my wife's middle sister uh, they diagnosed her a couple of weeks ago with stage 2 cancer and they found more tumors and have upgraded or downgraded however the terminology would be to stage 4 and it's not looking very good but we have a God that is a healer and uh, if you'll be in prayer for my sister-in-law and for my wife and that entire family then, uh, then I will take that as a personal favor. Amen. It's good to see Brother James Williams here in the house of the Lord today after a long illness. Amen. And uh, good to see him. And and do want to remind you of the blood drive that's coming up later this month. The uh, we, we had such a successful blood drive the last time. And, uh, and in, in honor of Brother Williams, and the, the people, from what I gather, they say that they don't think that we can top the last one. And uh, I'd like to do it just, if for no other reason, just to prove them wrong. But, uh, but, but we're going we're gonna to do that. So be sure to sign up for that. We've got a lot of stuff going. We've got a lot of stuff going. Um, we have, on the 20th of September, we have what's called the Summer Send-Off. And that is uh, a fun day and a BCS playground fundraiser. And that is going to include a 5K run, and it says slash walk. And uh, if you don't want to run or walk, you get in a wagon, I'll pull you. Um, it's going to be a barbecue cook-off, water slides, all kinds of stuff. So that's September the 20th. Don't forget that. We've got camp meeting coming up right here later this month. Uh, it's going to just a lot of things going on. It's going to be great. And, uh, and, and Brother Lovelace said it a while ago. He said, I'm glad. He said that he was glad he was in an apostolic church. And I'm going to tell you, I'm thankful I'm in an apostolic church. Amen. Where we still preach and teach the apostles' doctrine, which is repentance, water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost, which is still the greatest experience that you'll ever have. And I'm glad that I've been born again the Bible way. Amen. Amen. After the service following the service we're going to do a baby dedication we're going to dedicate joseph blake west in at the end of service so we're excited about that amen amen so uh so we're we're going to have a great time why don't you stand with me one more time and the holy ghost has been moving here in such a wonderful way why don't we just lift our hands to the lord and ask him to have his way in the remainder of this service i'm glad i've got a god that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. That's right. Can we worship Him? Can we praise Him? Lord, we love You, Jesus. We thank You, God. We thank You, Lord. Amen. We are excited and thankful every time that we have the opportunity to have Bishop and Sister Wilson home and able to hear Him preach and sing. And and, uh, we clapped enough that it looks like we've talked them into singing and preaching. Amen. Why do you say we have Holy Ghost Revival this morning? Welcome Bishop and Sister Wilson.
doing some more. I feel like singing another song here. Praise God. I don't know. Do you know Canaan land is just in sight? If you, if you don't, I know somebody that does. Play it. Play it. Is that okay with y'all? Can we sing one more? You can be seated, stand up, lay down, whatever you want to do.
you're looking forward to that day. Oh, won't it be wonderful when we get over yonder? Hallelujah. Leave our troubles behind. Leave our heartaches behind. Leave our disappointments behind. Come on now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. I'm not satisfied with this world. I'm looking for a better world. Be seated if you like. God bless you. Good to see you all here worshiping the Lord in such a wonderful way. Now I'm out of breath. But I'll get it back. Don't you worry about it. I'll get it back. Hallelujah. Brother James Williams, it's so good to see you here. Already made mention of you, but it's good to have you back in the house of the Lord. Looking good too, isn't he? Amen. Amen. Bless you. Looking forward to the day when Sister Bell Rose can be back with us. And uh, uh, had a great time of fellowship out here Friday night, as already been mentioned. And just a wonderful time with, with good folks and a lot of visitors out there. And a lot of visitors here today. Maybe, maybe we won't call you visitors. Maybe we'll just call you a regular comer from now on. Just keep coming. Isn't that right? Matthew 16, 18, and Psalms 137, 5, and 6. 137, 5, and 6. You should already know how to quote. For the most of you, you should know how to quote Matthew 16, 18. Isn't that right? And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, let me let me comment right there just a minute before we go to our next verse. It said thou art Peter, and upon this rock I build my church. I was uh, reading and have heard, of course, through the years that the Roman Catholics say that Peter was their first pope because the church was built upon him. But I got some news for him. It wasn't built upon Peter. It's built upon Jesus Christ. It was built upon the fact that Peter recognized who he was. And uh, I was over in Knoxville, Tennessee at, at, at uh, youth conference time. And a guy asked me about that, said, I would heard that Peter was the pope of the church. And I got to, got to witness to it. Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you something. If Peter was their pope, then they'd be baptizing in Jesus' name. They wouldn't have changed the formula to saying Father, Son, Holy Ghost. We're the only ones that really baptize in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Ghost. You know that? Because we baptize in the name of Jesus Christ, which is the name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, for Psalms 137, 5 and 6 said... If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, O Jerusalem, if you will, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. I wish I could say that I had a, a, uh, a, an intriguing title here today, but I don't. I got an intriguing message, I think. <laughs> but the title I'm going to use is My Chief Joy joy what is your chief joy what's the head of your life 
my chief joy. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. Upon this rock I will build my church. The word church in the Greek, the Greek word for church is ecclesia. E-K-K-L-E-S-I-A. Simply meaning a calling out, a gathering, an assembly. This word ecclesia was mentioned, if you will, 115 times in the New Testament, mostly in the book of Acts, and in the writings of the Apostle Paul and the general epistles. At least 92 times this refer- word refers to a local congregation. The other references are to the church in general for all believers everywhere for all ages. We call this the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, but we're just a part of that body of Christ. We are a member, we are members of of God's church, universal. Uh, The word actually means a calling out. I think we could look at that from the standpoint that we have been called out of darkness into this marvelous light. We are a separated people from the world. We are different from the world. God has put a difference between Egypt and Israel, the Bible says. Oh, yeah, come on now. And uh, I am glad to be part of the called out church. I'm not like everybody else. I didn't say I was better than everybody, but we're just not like everybody else because we are a called out, separated people, separated to godliness. And not only we could use that in that term, being called out from the darkness into the light, but one of these days we are going to be called out of this world. I don't know what you think about it, but Jesus coming after a bride that's called by his name, and we're going to get out of here. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain are going to be called out. Hallelujah. Now, 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 I I know my job is cut out for me because I, I, I saw a bunch of you sitting down a while ago. And you still not gotten started yet, but so my job's cut out. But to tell you what makes a preacher preach is people that get with him and preachers that people that don't get with him. So you might as well go ahead and get with me. It's gonna take me a whole lot less time if I have to, you know, if y'all get with me, but if you <laughs> Oh, I feel something coming on here today. Oh uh, yeah. But what happened to the church that Jesus built? Millions of people profess Christianity. Thank you, Brother Jacob, for using that term a while ago. He said it was a generic term. Well, as far as the world is concerned, that's right. It's very generic. But to the child of God, to become a Christian means you, that you are a believer in Christ. You are a follower of Christ. You have been baptized in His name. When they say Christian, that, 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 that is so general. That includes a lot of people out yonder. But to, the, to God, Christianity means you've been baptized in His name and filled with His Spirit and living for God. Come on now, help me out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. There's not even any argument about that. But Christianity, quote, unquote, is a divided religion composed of Hundreds of denominations and schisms, if you will. I, I uh, uh, read that in 2006 there was some 217 denominations plus others that don't claim to be that really are. But I'm going to tell you something. We don't even fit in that category. God's church, church doesn't fit into a denomination. We are the body of Christ. Oh, come on now. 
Don't make me struggle here. Somebody help me. Isn't that right? I think you believe it. You're just anxious to hear what's coming good next, right? Oh, yes. But we don't, we don't even claim to be a denomination. We claim to be the church. Peter said, and Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church. Thank God. But Christianity, again, quote, unquote, is divided is a divided religion composed of hundreds of denominations and schism. Through the centers, most of Christianity's, again, churches, branches, have assimilated many non-biblical traditions, philosophical and cultural and religious, into their teachings and practices, spawning even more variations. What are you saying? I'm saying if you don't like what that church believes or this church or the other church, you can start your own church. It's not going to be God's church, but you can start a religious schism, if you will. Amen. There are estimated 400,000 churches in America. One, one uh, uh, writer said 350,000. Another said 450,000. So I'm in the middle of that. But uh, uh, the, uh, the attendance there is, uh, is, uh, has, has begun, begun to decrease for most of the denominal world, if that's a good term. And, but the Pentecostal movement, those fill, getting filled with the Holy Ghost, talking in tongues, are increasing while others are decreasing. This movement, if you will, claims an estimated 2,400 rather 24 million adherents today and it's growing we baptized two last weekend I'd like to see some more get baptized this weekend some more get added to the church oh yeah I'm talking about Chief Joy I'll get there amen by the help of the Lord the church is the only institution that deals with the ultimate issues the ultimate issues if you will of death and judgment and relationship with God and purpose and lasting priorities and meaning in life and identity and heaven and hell. Thank God for the church that's still dealing with those. Amen. That's still dealing with those ultimate issues of life. I'm telling you, there are some ultimate issues, and that is, if you will, heaven and hell. I'm not preaching here today just to give you an option of what you can do or what you, you know, a few options. This is not a smorgasbord situation. It's one Lord, it's one faith, and it's one baptism. Uh, one God and Father of all. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you're in the body of Christ today? My daddy used to say the church is the greatest, if you will, educator of its time. And i tell you what, we are educating people on the ultimate issues of life. Heaven and hell. That's right. Church provides perspective that gives dignity to mankind. We're not made a little lower than the animals. We're made a little, uh, a little higher than the animals. We're made a little lower than the angels. It provides the church that is provides a moral and ethical compass in the midst of relativism, like a swamp of. Murky, slimy water, our society has either rethought, resisted, or completely rejected the absolutes. Come on now. I hope you swallowed that. Shall I do that again so you can get a better bite on it? It provides a moral and ethical compass in the midst of relativism. Like a swamp of murky, slimy water, our society has either rethought, resisted, or completely rejected absolutes, but not the church. The church is still standing for what the Word of God preaches and teaches. While all around us, denominalism, come on now, is detouring and getting around, come on, 
the truth and the facts about homosexuality and lesbianism, but the church is still standing. It's an abomination. An abomination is always an abomination. It was abomination in Scripture. I'm talking about there are some app. Some of you ain't clapping your hands. You surely don't join that silo where somebody, everybody in this place ought to be clapping their hands to that. If we can't preach that, Pastor, we can't preach anything. Woo! I'm glad that the churches, we're not about to ordain homosexuals into the ministry. You know what I'll do to a homosexual? I'll baptize him in Jesus' name, help him get the Holy Ghost, help him get his life turned around. We love the man, but we don't love the sin. Woo! Hey! The church world out there can accept abortion and all kind of killing babies, but the church is still standing on the rock. Upon this rock, I'll be on my church. Oh, don't get quiet on me now. Come on, don't get quiet on me now. The church is still standing. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this moral and ethical The church is a moral and ethical compass in the midst of relativism. The church doesn't fluctuate depending on what the world's thinking about issues. The world doesn't come up and down on their their thoughts about what the Word of God teaches. If society goes up and down, we don't go up and down. We remain what the Word of God says. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I got the right message here today. It stands on the timeless bedrock of Scripture. The church world, for the most part, doesn't tell you that you have to do anything. Just accept the Lord as your personal Savior. That's not even in the Bible. You better hope hope God accepts you. The way for God to accept you is for you to obey the Word of God. Hallelujah. You want me to tell you what the Word is? Repent. Hey, that's almost a dirty word in some churches. But let me tell you something. If you're going to get God into your life, Jesus said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. God, give us some people that repent. You know what? If you truly repent, when you get baptized, you'll get the Holy Ghost. And if you stay repented, you'll come to church. You'll look like a Christian. You'll act like a Christian. You'll walk like a Christian. You'll talk like a Christian. You'll pay your tithes like a Christian. You'll give your offering like a Christian. You'll witness like a Christian. Hallelujah. It's still the same. The church is the place to find healing, compassion, concern, love. Not because of status, money, or fame. But the Spirit of God is at work. Oh, hallelujah. You know what I like to see? I like to see the poorest of the poor fall in in the altar. And I've watched them. We got people here today that if, 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 if you'd let me name some of you, you had nothing until you came to God. But I like to see the poor brought to this altar, baptized in his name. Dressed up, hallelujah, increasing, getting jobs. Oh, let me get off on that right now. Just let me get off on that just a minute. Hey, hallelujah. We don't always have to be dependent on the government. That's what Obama wants. If you like him, fine and good. No, it's really not, but it's okay. I mean, but I'm going to tell you something. That it, it's, it's a sign of the end time. I'm going to tell you something. This, 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 this administration, I'm just going to put them all under there. This administration would not be what it is today had it not been for the end time. I don't see how America, you, you, you can crucify me if you want to, but I'll, I'll just get it off my chest. I don't see how America could have, a, a, could have voted for a Muslim president. Had it not been for the end time, big end time picture. 
God, oh, come on. I was going to say God bless America, but how can God bless something that is against truth and against the word of God? God help America. It's my prayer today. God help America. God help America. Woo! Let me tell you something. The church is the only institution that looks like in this society that's going to stand, that's going to stand in the midst of all of this compromise. Woo! Go ahead, let's praise them a little while. Thank God for the church. Somebody else say, thank God for the church. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The founding fathers of the United States wrote at the end of the Constitution that we are God's noble experiment. That we are God's, America that is, is God's noble experiment. The church, however, now the Constitution didn't say this, but I'm saying this. The church is not just God's noble experiment. The dictionary says an experiment is a scientific procedure undertaken to demonstrate a known fact. A test, if you will. Tentativeness, if you will. Words that indicate uncertainty. The church is not just a noble experiment. Not a tentativeness. Not a word that indicates uncertainty. But we are. The church is for sure. Jesus showed no uncertainty when he said, Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not. Come on, they may work against us, but they're not going to prevail because Jesus was sure of the church. Like the wise man of Matthew 7, the church is built on the rock. The un, upon the unshakable foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Christ's church is apostolic. It preaches what the apostles preached. Paul and Peter and the rest of the apostles preach water baptism. They preach Jesus' name baptism. They preach Holy Ghost. They preach talking in tongues. They preach holiness. Amen. And we contend for that. And Paul said in Galatians 1 and 8, If any man or an angel from heaven come to you preaching any other gospel, let him be accursed. Come on, so that's why I'm sticking with the book. That's why I'm sticking with the apostles' doctrine. Thank you, Pastor, for coming up here every church service and saying we're still an apostolic church. It's for sure. God was specific with his house. Build it this way. Noah's ark would not have floated, if you will, if it had not been built right. The church is not going up today. If it's not built on the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. The day of Pentecost is the birthday of the Christian church. What happened on that day? Again, they were baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. He was, that is, God is, was, and is sure of the eventual outcome of the church. It's not a test. It's the safest enduring entity in this world. That's why the writer could say, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Come on, help me now. Nor his seed begging for bread. If you want to be sure of anything, have Jerusalem as your chief joy. Have the church as your chief joy. It's not God's afterthought to take care of an emergency. It's a, it was predestined to survive any culture. He never left himself without a witness. I said he never left himself. There's always been somebody on earth 
even through the dark ages, even through the trying times, even through the rough times of life, there's always been somebody here on the earth since the day of Pentecost that was a baptized believer in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody get happy with me. Oh, Holy Ghost tongue talking. He never left himself without a witness. Hallelujah. I believe today we're in the church of the living God. He chose us to finish his work. He chose us to finish his work. The church is not, the future of the church is not contingent upon who sits in the Oval Office or in the seats of Congress. No matter what they do and the laws they make, the church is going to be for sure. Its complete success is assured regardless of the political, economic, religious, or social climate. It needs no adjusting from the world to keep us on course. There is the church today that is triumphant. Amen. There is an invisible church and the church militant. The church triumphant is the one that's already gone on. Ooh, and aren't we made to set together in heavenly places even here today? But aren't there those that's looking down up from above saying, come on. Hebrews talks about it. Come on. There is the church invisible that's already made it. But yet there's the church militant that is visible. And we're looking at each other today. We are a militant church. We're fighting for our liberties. We're fighting for our freedoms. That's why I'm preaching like I'm preaching today. I want to put somebody in the knowledge to the knowledge today that you can't make it without the church. You can make it without a lot of other things, but you can dilly-dally around and be half-hearted coming to church, but you're not going to make it without the church. You can be slipshod in your faithfulness if you want to, but you're going to be left behind and lost if you're not careful. God, help us to get this thing as our chief joy, as our chief joy. There will be a remnant of true believers who will keep the faith in the midst of a crook and perverse generation. Psalms 100 and verse 5, I believe it is, says, His truth endure to all generations. Thank God. The ultimate destiny is unchangeable. His truth is marching on. Hallelujah. The church has been through the flood. It's been through the fire, but it has a firm foundation. It does make a difference what church you go to. I said it does make a difference what church you go to. If you go to a church that doesn't preach the truth, you can't be saved there. You say, well, it doesn't matter. You just go anywhere. You, you sort of like going to Chicago. You know, you can take this route, and I can take another route, and we'll find up, wind up in Chicago. Hey, we're not going to Chicago. You don't get to heaven like you go to Chicago. You get to heaven like the road map says, like the book says, like the Bible says, like the church teaches. And you get in the church. It's been through the flood. It's been through the fire. But it's going to stand. They that worship him. I said it, it does make a difference what church you go to. Because Jesus said it. Can I give you Jesus' words? Will that, will that be more impacting to you? Jesus said, they that worship him. And again, you've heard me say it over. Not them. But they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, hallelujah. Thank God we have the truth. God, we have the word. Thank God we got the road map. We got the truth. But we, we don't only have the truth. We have the spirit with it. There are a lot of people that will claim they have truth but have no spirit. Then there's other, the charismatic movement that says they got the spirit but they don't believe the whole truth. But I'm here to tell you they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Thank God. Somebody ought to thank God that you got a church close enough to you that's got spirit. And not only spirit but got truth.
earnestly contend for the faith, Jude said. I believe it was John said, this then is the way. Saul persecuted those of this way. Mm. Peter said on the day of Pentecost, the Lord added to the church, or Luke recorded, the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Who adds? I don't add. Why him? Because it's his church. He adds to the church daily those that should be saved. You said, you, you know, I said a while ago, I said a while ago, you got to go to the right church. You know, if you, if you don't go, to, and I talked about coming to church. If you're added to the church, you can be saved. If you're not added to the church, you're not going to be saved. The Lord added to the church daily such as those that should be saved. You can't be saved without the church. You can't be voted in, signed in, get on a temporary membership roll somewhere, but you want your name written down in the Lamb's book of life. Woo, glory. I've been born, born twice. Once, I can't remember. The other one I can't forget. I was born in Atlanta, Georgia at a very early age. Finally, somebody caught on. And I can't, I don't remember that date. They, 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 they said I was born. <laughs> it was March the 7th. 1947, you don't even have to calculate it, 67 years. But I don't remember that. But they tell me my name was recorded in the, in the, in the, in the, in the records of uh, Atlanta or Fulton County, Atlanta capital over there. I went to see the old birthplace here a few years ago. And, uh, and, and you know... You know, I, I, this is not in my notes, but it, 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 you'll like it. It was just about, just about as far it is as, as it is from here to my house right now, there was a Bethlehem church. Wow, well, I was right. Is that all you can say? That's all you need, yeah. But, but, uh, but I, you know, and I, and I don't, you know, my name was recording over there. Oh, hallelujah. And I don't remember all that. But I do remember getting baptized in Jesus' name. I remember talking in tongues. Hallelujah. My name wasn't recorded in Atlanta, Georgia for that. But it was recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. Thank God. Your part is to repent. The preacher's part is to baptize you. God's part is to give you the Holy Ghost and get your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Can I have 10 minutes from you guys over here? 10? That's right. 10 minutes? What about right here? Ten minutes on this side. Can I have ten? What about right here? That's 30, 40, 50. How many times have I done that? And they still ain't done. He said, if I forget thee. Psalms 137, 5 and 6. What did he say? 137, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning if I forget thee O Jerusalem you know what Galatians 4 26 said but Jerusalem which is above is free which is the mother of us all you know what happened in Jerusalem I've said it over and over what I've already said it over that's where the church was founded that's where the church come on that's where the church was born that's where they first started baptizing in Jesus name and Holy Ghost hallelujah aren't you glad we go back to the first church Aren't you glad we go back to the first church? Jerusalem is where, if you look it up, Jerusalem is where he chose to put his name. Jerusalem shall be called the throne of the Lord. The church is called the children of Zion. The children of, of Jerusalem, if you will. 
We are the choice one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he said, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem. In other words, for your, for your application today, if I forget the church, if I forget the church, oh, let my right hand forget her cunning. I want to be so close to the church and so close to God. I love it that much to be able to say, God, if I forget you, whatever I'm capable, whatever talents I have, let my right hand or let my working hand, if you will, let her, let it forget its cunning. Let it forget its ability to do anything. God, what I'm saying is keep me always loving the church. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. A lot of folks just forgot the church as far as they're coming, as far as they're being faithful. But he said, if I forget, well, he, he loved it enough to say, God, I'm, I'm, I'm putting myself out here. I'm backing myself into a corner. If I ever forget the church, let my roof, my, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. Every time I think of that scripture, I think of a story I heard about a preacher on the radio. He was preaching and he was bearing down on adultery and fornication. He said, God, he said, if I ever commit fornication and adultery, he said, let my tongue clean the roof of my mouth. Some of them hadn't got that neither yet. But, but the writer said, if I forget thee, if I forget Jerusalem, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. That's how he loved the church. That's how high he put the church above everything else. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. You see, they were setting by the rivers of Babylon. In, Babel, in their Babylonian captivity. It was customary for the Jews to hold their religious meetings on the banks of rivers. And even into the New Testament, on the Sabbath, they went out, by the, uh, went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. So it was customary that they'd gather, gather by the rivers. And here they were by the rivers of Babylon. They that carried us away required us, uh, they carried us away captive, required of us a song. What an unreasonable and how insulting it was to, for them to bring us to slavery and drag us in chains for our own beautiful land and, and privileges of Jerusalem and our home place and expect us to sing a sacred ode to please them who were both enemies to us and to our God and how cold how could those who wasted us expect mirth from people in captivity, deprived of all their possessions in the most abject state of poverty and oppression? I'm, I'm giving you a little picture here. This is the most affecting picture. Perhaps resting themselves after toil and wishing to spend their time uh, religiously, they took their harps and were about to sing one of the songs of dying. But reflecting on their own country, they became so filled with distress that they unstrung their harps, if you will, with consent and hung them on the willow bushes and gave a general loose to their grief. They just become grieved because they were remembering their past. They were remembering the days of Jerusalem. They remembered the waters, if you will, of Bethlehem. I wish I could stir up some people's minds here today that's let go of this that let go of this uh, uh, hole that you've had that you've just slacked up a little bit and you hadn't been coming to church like you ought to I wish I could stir up a memory in you that's that 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 you would say I remember that time that I got baptized I remember when I got the Holy Ghost I remember when I was set free oh God help us to remember those days Whatever else they may have left back in Judah. You know what? They left a lot of things back in Judah. But they brought their harps with them. For music was important to their worship of the Lord. What are you saying? I'm saying don't lose your song. 
hold on to something. Hold on to a a memory of your past. The harps they used in God's worship. They did not throw them away. Hoping they might yet against have an occasion to use them. But they laid them aside. They did not hide their harps in the bushes or in the hollows of the rocks. But they hung them up in view that the sight of them might affect them with the deplorable change that they were in. What are you saying? I'm saying always hold in view something that puts you back to where you first found Jesus. Come on, hold on to something. Keep that memory of the day that you were baptized and got the Holy Ghost. Come on, can anybody remember that time? Can anybody remember that time? Can anybody remember that time? Somebody ought to be shouting hallelujah. Hey, you can't remember when you were first born, but you can remember your second birth when he baptized you with the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. They had that constant affection they retained for Jerusalem. Amen. Oh, yes. How these pious captives stood affected to Jerusalem. Their heads were full of Jerusalem. It was always in their minds they remembered it. Oh, yeah, they did not forget it. Though they had been long absent from it because it became them. What are you saying? I'm saying the church ought to become you. Our forethought every day ought to be the church. When we make decisions, how does it affect the church? How does it affect my soul? I love the church. I prefer it more than I do anything else in this world. It's my chief joy. It's my chief joy. God help us as parents to teach our children a love for the church. No wonder some of our church, some of our children are not here today is because in our past we didn't have a love for church like we should have had it and they're out genre maybe lost today. Am I preaching? Is this okay? Am I still at Bethlehem here? Come on. So I'm trying to not not just bring up your past, but I would like to help some of these young adults that are bringing up children. You love the church. You should love the church more than you love anything else. It ought to be your preference above everything else. All other things in life doesn't matter except the church. The chief joy. I remember being raised in this little house up here. What it, it was little at one time. Daddy, uh, it was three rooms. I think he brought bought that piece of property from from uh, Brother Pipkin. It was ten acres of land, three rooms, and it was sitting real close to, to the to the road, gravel road. Daddy took a saw, if you will, and sawed brother Danny the room off the front room off of that house and took his Packard car I believe put and got cut some trees whatever uh, brother KC and, 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 and made, made, it, made them where he could roll that house on those logs and put hook that thing to a chain and pull that front room around to the back room now this don't have a whole lot to do with what I'm, my point but I want you to know where we come from <laughs> and he pulled that house uh, uh, pulled that front room about and attached it to the back of the house instead of pulling the whole house back he just uh, you know for whatever reason he he, 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 he he did that and then he would add one room on to another room Joe Whaley said oh 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 Joe Whaley said said uh, every time Brother Wilson had a child he gave him a hammer and told him to build him a room on it And so now it's a pretty good sized piece of property and nobody living in it but one. And, uh, and now, and, and, and I remember those old days. Daddy used to preach back yonder in that prayer room. If you've never been to the prayer room, you ought to try it out. That's where the church first had its building. And so the prayer room back there, he would preach and then he preached in the next one. Then he preached here before he went home to be with the Lord. 
but he would preach and he would tell the people he'd say when you when you when you when you have company come by it's about church time what we do is we tell them we have church tonight you can go with us or you can either stay here we'll be back after a while but we're going to church Woo, I'm preaching now I am preaching now some of you folks look for a blasted excuse just to stay out oh was that anointed or not hey I'm tiptoeing around out here do I need to get over there and do this We act like church is the second or third or fourth or fifth thing on our list. Woo! I feel a little resentment coming here. Look at these guys right here. I was thinking about thinking about you just, I don't know, last night or today. When they got in church, they didn't come here just to hit and miss. Come to worship God. Every now and then he has to work on a church time, but it, it, when, it, when church, when he gets off of work and when when he's when he's not having to work, he's here and you're here all the time. Woo, Lord, gonna be oh what? Be here from now. On. And then and then some that's been here for thirty and forty years hit and miss. My God. Get a hold of yourself. This is not third and fourth priority. We got to prefer this. We got to prefer this joy and this worship and this praise above everything else. Hey, if you don't, God can take away some things. Oh, jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Come on now. If God is jealous of your job, if he's jealous of whatever it may be, your other priorities, he can kill them because he's able to destroy anything else that's keeping you from preferring him. Is that okay? Come on. Come on. Mama, are we going to church tonight? What? No. We didn't ask mother and daddy, are we going to church tonight? We asked them, are we having church tonight? Get quieter all the time. Maybe I should have preached this first and got the crescendo later. What's your cheapest joy? What makes you happier than anything else? Is it pleasure? Is it shopping? Is it sports? Well, there's a whole lot of gods out there. We, 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 we can make light of all the, we can make light of all the, the, the gods that they built and the statutes they built and all this stuff that the Israelites built. But if you're not careful, we can have our own gods come on and prefer them more than we prefer the church. That's why Paul said, if you will, I believe Paul probably wrote Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assemblies Assembling of ourselves together as a man of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Whoa, what's the next verse say? For if we sin willfully, after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for ours. I'm going to tell you something. That's a li- these verses are too are crowded a little bit too close for me to be comfortable with missing church. You hear what I said? These verses are crowded too close for me to be comfortable with missing church when there's no more sacrifice. Come on, oh God, help me to find myself in your house. Find myself in your house. Come on, somebody lift your hand and say, God, help me to love this more than I love anything else. Help me to love this more than, come on to the music. I can preach some more, but come on. Come on, come on. Help me to love this more than I love anything else. 
Oh, that's my chief joy. There are other joys out there, but church is my chief joy. For a day in thy courts, Psalms 84, 10, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. And you know what? He left that open at the end. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. A thousand what? A thousand days? A thousand months? A thousand years? A thousand drinks on the bottle? A thousand shoot up with drugs? Hey, a day in his courts is better than a thousand anything. What you're feeling right now, if you're feeling the Holy Ghost, is better than a thousand anything that this world has to offer. Thank God for the church. Thank God for the church. Oh, is it your chief joy today? Oh, that's why Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All other pursuits. Let me, the writer said, let me forever be disabled either to sing or play on the harp if I forget the religion of my country, if I forget Jerusalem, if I forget the church. Help me not to be able to function in any way if I forget the church. Stand with me. You know what? At the Ark of the Covenant, at the tabernacle, you know what they found? They found their tents surrounding the tabernacle. Wherever the tabernacle was, that's where their tent was. What does that say? That say that says the ark, the tabernacle was the center of attraction to the children of Israel. And I'm saying to you, the church ought to be the center of attraction of your life. Some of you may love hunting. Some of you may love fishing. Some of you may love golfing. Some of you may love shopping. Some of you may love whatever, whatever. And a lot of those things are fine. Some of those things have no, there's not wrong to do. And I'm not preaching against having a good time in this world. But our chief joy ought to be when we get into the presence of God. Get into the presence of God. In the presence of God, there is what? Fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. Come on in with me. Come on with me. If you love the church, I want you to come in. If you don't love the church, just stand back. But if you love the church, come on in. Come on in. In His presence, there's fullness of joy, and I. you above everything. Help me to put you above everything. Help me to put you above everything. Help me to put you above everything. everything. Help me to put you above everything, Lord, above everything. I love 
love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Thank him for his house. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. God, I worship you. God, I worship you. Hallelujah. In the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. If you're not getting joy from coming to the house of the Lord, maybe you're not getting in his presence. You may want to try worship and prayer and saying, God, what do I have to do? What is it in my life? What do I have to do to get into your presence? Thank you, Bishop, for preaching to us and bringing the word to us. We're going to do a baby dedication right now. In a few moments, Brother Jacob's going to come and he's going to make an announcement, so stay around. And uh, Brother Joseph, if you'll get your, your baby and family. And also, while they're doing that, what an appropriate message, what an appropriate message for a baby dedication service, and also to have a brand new baby. Look at Dana Watson right back here, brand new baby Alyssa Watson, born to, to Dana and Colette, amen, isn't that a blessing, look at that beautiful little baby, I saw him in town, hey, 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 listen, listen up folks, we're, we're not done, we're not done, we're not done yet, okay? We're getting ready to do a baby dedication. We're, we're going to take, bring our tithes so, so we're not done yet. But I saw him in town. He has a phone about the size of a big screen TV. And I asked him when he started carrying a big screen TV around. He said, when I started having pictures of her. And, uh, and I don't blame him. Amen. Brother Joseph. Brother Joseph. Amen. Look at this handsome little man. All dressed up. Joseph. Blake West, born on June the 18th, 2014, 8 pounds, 10 ounces, 21 inches long, and just as sweet as he can be. The Word of the Lord says, the Word of the Lord says, in Deuteronomy 6, it says, these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. These parents today have a commandment from the Lord to teach little Joseph Blake West the Lord's commandments. It's the commandment of God that we rear our children in our faith. And in obedience, to the, in obedience to this command, these parents 
Bring this child today to present him to the Lord. Hannah brought Samuel to the house of the Lord in 1 Samuel chapter number 1. And she said, for this child I pray. And the Lord hath given me the petition which I have asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. And as long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And then they worship the Lord. This family is bringing this child today to give him to God. And as long as he lives, he will be the Lord. Paul reminded Timothy that from a child he had been taught the faith. You have a responsibility to this child. The Bible said there arose a generation that knew not the Lord nor the works he had done in Israel. You can blame that generation for not knowing the Lord, but you cannot blame them for not knowing the works that the Lord had done. Somebody had failed to teach them. So you have a responsibility today to teach this child. And Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. And forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. I think I say it at every baby dedication service that we do. That this is really not so much a baby dedication as it is a parent's dedication. These parents are coming today to pledge themselves to train this child. The Bible says, provoke not your children to wrath, but to bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. We understand that one rendering of this passage is to not, to not do things that will make your children angry on purpose. You know, sometimes parents will aggravate their children on purpose. But you also can take it to say that don't live your life in such a way that if your child lives like you, that it would provoke them to eternal wrath. So you bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. So these two parents today are here to dedicate themselves and to bring this child to the Lord and to commit themselves to fulfilling the scripture that says train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it. I want to pull out one word from that passage. The Bible says train up a child. It does not say tell a child says train. Training is done by repetition, by showing, by doing. Worship in a way that if your child worships like you, he can get the Holy Ghost worshiping like you do. Pray in a way that if that child prays like you, that that child can be saved. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. If it's your intention today to present Joseph Blake West to the Lord and to pledge yourselves to bring him up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, I want you to clearly say we do to these following promises. Do you on this day recognize that this child is the gift of God and that God has blessed you with him and do you give thanks for this blessing? Do you here on this day dedicate this child to the Lord who gave him to you and promise to give this child every possible benefit of home, school, and church and to protect and to provide for him? Do you here this day ask God's blessing upon his life to guide, guard, and direct him through all of his years and to always raise this child in the truth of God's holy word, always putting the Lord first in all matters? now the most important one do you promise to live an example of faithfulness holiness and virtue before this child in such a way that your words and your actions will not conflict you have made your promises and now bishop i'm going to ask you if you will to to pray over this child and i'm going to ask the church to stand we're going to pray together it takes a church to raise a child Let's pray together. Pastor B, lay your hands on this couple today as we pray for this child and this couple. Jesus, thank you, Lord, for giving us this child. Thank you for bringing him into our lives. 
God, I ask you to take care of him from this moment on. Give him good health. Give him a good mind. Give him good heart. Give him good soul. Help him to realize that you come first in everything in his life. Touch these parents to raise them according to your plan, according to your will. We give him to you today. We ask you to keep him safely, keep him from harm and danger, keep him from evil, Lord. Keep him from the effects of evil, the influence of evil. Be with him from this moment on. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Good looking dude, huh? This great. This is great. Can y'all see him over there? That fine. Uh, he's about to wake up and say hallelujah here. Praise the Lord. Just one more moment as we're getting ready to be dismissed. I will make an announcement. Uh, Sister Voskis, I believe, 40th birthday is coming up July the 13th. Uh, this is a special time when we want to recognize her. And we are going to be taking uh, offerings, donations, however you want to say that, uh, for her uh, present. I believe she's in Indiana right now with her sister. And obviously when she comes home, we want to be able to greet her and we're going to throw her a party. So if you're interested in making a donation to that, please see Sister Coker or Sister Shelly Goolsby to be involved with that. Listen to me, this is very important. This is a secret. We're going to throw her a surprise party. Uh, so please don't go up to her and start talking about uh, the, the announcement or how much you gave, maybe. But, uh, but make sure you keep that a secret. Uh, we want to do this. It's going to be next Sunday night. Uh, so, so be thinking about that today, tonight, or Wednesday night. You can give that offering, and they're going to present that to her next Sunday night. So be planning on doing that. And all the ladies who are, are helping with the party, uh, Sister Shelly Goolsby would like to meet with you up here in the front, uh, just immediately following service. Uh, please, again, be attentive to the idea this is a secret. Uh, you can be dismissed. God bless you in Jesus' name.